Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we will explain the clinical examination of facial fractures. Uh, after the patient uh, has been initially stabilized, a complete history should be obtained. This history should be obtained from the patient, but because of loss of consciousness or impaired neurologic status, information must often be obtained from the witness or accompanying family members. A complete review of systems, including information about allergies, medications, and of previous tetanus immunization, medical conditions, and prior surgeries should be obtained. Uh, clinical examination uh, should consist of a proper protocol of inspection and uh, palpation. After careful clinical assessment of facial area, Radiographs should be taken to provide additional information about facial uh, injuries. In cases of severe facial trauma, cervical spine injuries should be ruled out with a complete cervical spine series uh, that is cross table, uh, odontoid, and oblique views of the cervical spine before any manipulation of the neck. CT, uh, C the CT should be done uh, is required. Uh, evaluation of the facial uh, area should be performed in sequence. The face and cranium should be carefully inspected for evidence of trauma, including laceration, aberrations, and contusion. Uh, areas of edema or hematoma formation and possible contour defects. Uh, Areas uh, of ecchymosis uh, should be carefully uh, evaluated. Uh, Periorbital ecchymosis, especially with subconjunctival hemorrhage, is often indicative of orbital rim or zygoma complex fractures. Bruises behind the ear or petal signs suggest a, a bas basilar uh, skull fracture. Ecchymosis in the floor of the mouth. Uh, usually indicates anterior mandibular fracture. Uh, any laceration uh, should be carefully cleaned and uh, evaluated for possible transection of major nerves or ducts, such as facial nerve or stinson duct. Uh, the mandible should be carefully evaluated by extra orally palpating all areas of inferior and lateral borders and temporomandibular giant uh, paying particular attention to areas of points of tenderness. Bimanual palpation of the suspected area uh, 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 means that the suspected fracture area should be performed by placing foam pressure over the mandible posterior and interior to the fracture area in an attempt to manipulate and elicit mobility in this area. Here you can see the fingers are placed interior and posterior to the fracture area. So, uh, bony crepitus uh, of the uh, bony segment should be checked. Um, mobility of the teeth and uh, the area of the fracture or, uh, or area of possible fracture should also be noted. The occlusion uh, should be uh, re-examined after uh, this uh, maneuver. The occlusion uh, should be examined and step deformant is as shows in this uh, picture, clinical picture. Uh, so the occlusion should be examined and step deformant is along the occlusal plane uh, and the laceration of gingival areas should be assessed. The evaluation of the mid face begins with an assessment of the mobility of the maxilla is in isolated structure or in combination with the zygoma or nasal bones. To assess maxillary uh, mobility, uh, see in this picture, uh, the patient's head uh, should be stabilized by using, uh, by using pressure over the uh, forehead with one, with one hand. Uh, with the thumb and forefinger of the other hand, uh, the maxilla is crossed now and foam pressure should be used to elicit maxillary mobility. Uh, 
In this picture, uh, you can uh, dissect the maxillary mobility of leaf root uh, one and leaf root three fracture. Uh, and in this picture, uh, you can elicit the mobility for leaf root, uh, typically for leaf root two uh, fracture, but you can also elicit the mobility of the leaf root one fracture. Uh, asymmetry should be noted if present. Examine the nose for CSF rhinorrhea. The upper facial and mid facial region should be palpated for laceration, obvious depression in the skull, step deformities in the forehead orbital rim or nasal or zygoma areas. Uh, it should be done bimanually in a systematic manner. Uh, from digital pressure over these areas uh, is used uh, to carefully evaluate the bony contours and uh, may be uh, difficult when these areas are grossly edematous. Uh, look for lid lacerations, attachment of medial canthal tendon, take immediate of the lemolagic uh, consultation. Uh, an evaluation of the nose and paranasal structures include measurement of intercanthal distance between the innermost portion of the left and right medial uh, canthus. Uh, here you can see in this picture injury to the naso orbital ethmoidal complex area, which resulted in, in the displacement of the medial canthal uh, ligament and a widening of intercanthal distance that is a traumatic uh, tethy canthus. Uh, here you can see a diagram of a bony uh, fractures and medial canthal ligament displacement. Uh, you can see uh, another clinical photograph uh, of nasoarbitroethmoidal uh, fracture. Uh, injuries, uh, uh, that is mean nasoarbitral ethmoidal injuries, these cause the spreading of the nose. Here you can see in this picture, spreading of the nose and displacement of the medial canthal ligament resulting in traumatic telecanthus. Uh, so the clinical image here, you can also appreciate the uh, um, traumatic telecanthus and uh, uh, in this clinical image of traumatic uh, telecanthus uh, with a ruler to demonstrate widening in, in millimeter. Uh, normally, the medial uh, intercanthal uh, distance should equal the, uh, should equal the ailer, uh, ailer ba uh, base of uh, width, uh, ailer base width. Here you can see ailer base width that uh, the intercanthal di distance, this is the intercanthal distance, that should be equal the ailer base uh, width. Um, the nose should also be evaluated for asymmetry. The bony anatomy of the nose should be evaluated by palpation. A nasal speculum is used to visualize the uh, internal aspect of the nose to locate excessive bleeding uh, or hematoma formation, particularly in the area of nasal septum. Uh, now assess the mandibular opening to check whether the coronoid is obstructed by zygoma fracture. An intraoral inspection uh, should include an evaluation of the areas of mucosal laceration or ecchymosis in the buccal vestibule or along the palate. Uh, in checking for zygoma complex or arch fracture, an index finger can be inserted in the maxillary vestibule adjacent to the molars while palpating and applying pressure superior laterally. A bony crepitus or extreme tenderness require a further workup. Uh, check the occlusion for areas of loose or missing teeth and uh, involvement of maxillary or dentolular fracture. Unilateral occlusal prematurity with contralateral open bite should raise suspicion for some type of jaw fracture. These areas should be assessed before, during, and after manipulation. That is the manual manipulation of the uh, mandible and the mid face. Uh, a neurological examination of the face should include careful evaluation of uh, all cranial nerves. Uh, complete eye examination should also be performed. Uh, vision, extra oral movements, and pupillary reaction to light uh, should be carefully evaluated. 
visual equity or pupillary changes may suggest intracranial nerve two or three dysfunction or direct uh, orbital trauma. Uneven uh, pupils, that is in this so chorea is in a lethargic patient suggest an intracranial bleed, that is subdural or epidural hematoma or intraparenchymal bleed or injury. In asymmetric or irregular, not round pupil is most likely caused by globe uh, eyeball perforation. Abnormalities of ocular movements may also indicate a uh, central neurologic problem that is cranial three, nerve three, four, or six, or mechanical restriction uh, of the movements of the uh, eye muscles resulting from fractures of the orbital complex. Here you can see in this picture entrapment of the inferior rectus muscle uh, that is the result of the impingement of the uh, area in uh, uh, linear fracture uh, that is a linear orbital floor fracture. Uh, so here you can see the patient is able to rotate the eye uh, in upward direction and uh, no problem for the patient to rotate the eye on the, on the right as well as on the left because there is a no injury to the superior rectus muscle. Uh, so, uh, in, where is in the uh, downward uh, gaze, the patient is unable to rotate the uh, left eye inferiorly, where, where is the right eye is fully rotated uh, inferiorly. Uh, because uh, here the, uh, there is a, an entrapment of the inferior rectus muscle uh, and due to the linear orbital flow fracture, so the patient is unable to rotate the eye uh, inferiorly due to the entrapment in, in, of inferior rectus muscle in the uh, fracture floor of the orbit. Uh, motor function of the facial uh, muscles uh, and muscles of mastication and sensation over the facial area should be evaluated. Any laceration should be carefully cleaned and evaluated for possible transection of major nerves or ducts such as uh, facial nerve or stinson duct is pointed out earlier. Thank you.